have to say that this unusual form factor has left me a bit disappointed. This, the Motorola Pro Plus, is in theory the answer to my all-in-one device dreams. One phone to do everything. It's not even expensive. This is now about £160 sim-free in the UK. I was so looking forward to trying this. Yes, I know the Pro Plus has been out for the best part of six months, but somehow it had escaped my gaze. But the specs and features are so attractive. Just listen to this. One piece, robust design, 130 grams or so, with rubberized textured rear that makes the phone impossible to drop. Gorilla Glass, Android operating system and choice of apps. Decent 5 megapixel camera, 720p video capture, a decent loudspeaker here on the bottom, one gigahertz processor inside, replaceable 1600 milliamp hour battery that genuinely gives two days per charge. Full QWERTY keyboard, so the screen's always fully visible even when typing. It's got keyboard initiated universal search. Just wow. And then the Pro Plus arrived. <laughs> The specs are as advertised. What the specs don't tell you though are in no particular order. The build quality is very average. Listen to this. I hope you can hear that creaking noise every time you pick the device up. Rather annoying. The keyboard, the single biggest unique selling point, is horribly, appallingly sculpted. A carbon copy of that on the BlackBerry Bold 9900. Uh, that's not good. <laughs> it's set up so that the keys to the left of centre are angled to the left, those to the right of centre are angled to the right. But in real world typing, when fingers are flying, there'll be a lot of crossover. So, for example, your right thumb will need to hit R or T, and then it feels like a ridge instead of a solid block of plastic. Very bad design, and I can't believe Motorola actually tested this with a focus group. Add in that the keys themselves are also very well clicky, stiff and with minimal travel. All in all, a world away from the almost identically sized keyboard on the likes of the Nokia E6 here, for example. The 5 megapixel camera here isn't bad for static subjects, but there's a good second or so between tapping the on-screen icon and the picture being taken. For family shots, this shutter lag is just terrible. Even outside in good light, I end up with photos like this, and this, and this, effectively missing the action every single time because of the delay. And no, you can't just tell a three-year-old, stand still, don't move, stay still, a bit more. It doesn't work. 3.1 inch screen here is VGA, not WVGA, which shouldn't make that much difference, but many applications do seem hard coded for the more traditional resolution, so don't expect 100% compatibility. Some apps, as here, simply have their bottom 160 pixels chopped off. In Motorola's defense, you can opt in settings here to have specific application displays scaled to fit every time, like this, but it's a little bit of a clutch, if I'm honest. The Pro Plus does run Android, but it's Android 2.3.6, and Motorola has confirmed that the Pro Plus will not be getting Android 4, probably because the device doesn't have enough RAM. Android 2.3 shouldn't be an issue though, I mean, after all, many of us were happy enough with it back in the day, and for most users, it'll be just fine, but it's a real wrench for me as a power user, getting used to Android 4 and other devices, having to go back and remember where things were in the older version. Tim reckoned on phone show chat that the speaker here was amazingly loud, it's the same component as on most other Motorola phones, and it is loud enough, but it's, it's all a bit tinny to my ears. All a bit tinny after enjoying the Nokia 808, N8, iPhone 4, iPhone 4S speakers, etc. Sorry, I don't mean to sound too negative here. Maybe if I hadn't built up my expectations so high in the first place. <laughs> Displeasure over the key design aside, it's nice to have full QWERTY always available and not to have to keep tapping on the glass to enter text in a small window on a portion of the display as you do on every other touchscreen phone. It's also great to have a wealth of Motorola Enterprise editions from built-in Wi-Fi tethering and GoToMeeting client to the editing version of QuickOffice to full device encryption to remote management features. Good stuff. For everyone, there are keyboard shortcuts to the applications of your choice. Here's Music Player, for example, with Search Plus M, and here's Search Plus Y giving YouTube. Or just start typing on the home screen to start a universal search. Ouch. Don't tell Apple's lawyers, by the way. Or, <clears throat> or Palms. <laughs> Call quality is great, with noise cancellation from the second mic on the Pro Plus's top edge. The system disk is a gigabyte or so, which is fine, plus you get another gig and a half of mass memory, and then most people will add a micro SD as well. 512 megabytes of RAM is ample for Android 2.3, though going back to a single core one gigahertz processor for this OS is again a bit of a shock for me. Everything seems a bit, well, laggy after the 2012 multi-core monsters we've seen. 
but perhaps I'm being a little harsh here. The eagle-eyed will spot that the skin used here on top of Android is Motoblur, but you can skip Motoblur sign in during the initial setup and all the Motoblur widgets are easy enough to uh, get rid of. So I'm not going to complain too bitterly. So yes, I was a bit disappointed by the Motorola Pro Plus. I was hoping for a spectacularly easy to use keyboard, a decent camera and speaker, and I was prepared to live with a smaller display and a degree of Motorola blurriness. Instead, I ended up with a a quirky keyboard that's actually fairly horrible to type on, a camera that can only photograph subjects which never ever move, and a speaker that's very harsh on my delicate ears. For £150 or so, this is good enough value. That's a lot of raw functionality. But you won't fall in love with the Pro Plus, trust me. I tried. I had my heart broken. I love showcasing phones that are a little different. In this case, the phone for your mum or dad, or perhaps granny or grandad. Everything about the Binetone BB200 is huge. Huge buttons, a huge fronted display, a huge charging or ringing LED array on top. There's even a huge red panic button on the back. This is for those with poor finger dexterity or eyesight, or both, to enable voice calls and very simple text messages. Every button press is accompanied by a beep and digits by audible confirmation of the number concerned. Camera, don't be silly. Wi-Fi. <laughs> ah, even data? No. But every single mobile I've tried setting up my parents with has been a failure, yet they embrace the BB200 with open arms and delight. So I've given the BB200 to my dearly beloved father, age 76, and I think it'll be a big improvement on his last uh, small, cheap Nokia. Brad, what do yeah. you think? I agree with you entirely, Steve. There's, there's no doubt in my mind that it's, it's easier to hold. It's The numbers are clear. My fingers manage the numbers. It's, 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 it works much better for me. I don't know why it is, but my fingers didn't, couldn't handle the Nokia very well. And the screen itself, I can actually read perfectly happily without my glasses so that is very important also and in particular I, I have to say that I, I'm really very impressed with the M1, M2, M3 shortcut buttons um, to my son, my daughter and my breakdown service of the car uh, it's going to make it a lot less worrying I think when we go off for a journey so very impressed indeed and we shall see how we get on at £30, maybe this is the inexpensive large buttoned mobile phone that your relatives have been waiting for too. The Binetone BB200.